Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show, we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about One Piece, Season 1, Episode 2. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, I'm going to break this down bit by bit. First and foremost, let's start off with the past stuff with Shanks and Luffy. There, we do have the breakdown of kind of the lore of like what happens when someone eats the devil fruit. The sea turns against them, it's kind of, and, and I do like that it is something that this universe does play with more and more. We see later on how Buggy weaponizes seawater, but obviously that becomes a staple throughout the rest of the show. Like, that's a, a powerful, like, advantage, well, thing to use against a Devil Fruit user. It's like, they all have that one universal weakness. It's like, oh, imagine every Devil Fruit user is Superman, or rather, every Devil Fruit user is a Kryptonian, and what are Kryptonians weak to? Kryptonite. So, seawater is their Kryptonite, and how that gets utilized, obviously, without going into spoilers, but if you're familiar with One Piece, you know how that gets weaponized and utilized later on in a more convenient means, uh, I should rather say. But, um... Luffy thought, like, right, now that I have this power, I can obviously join your ranks. But for Shanks, it's like, no, you can't, and we're not going to come back. We're, we're leaving. Had to kind of tell him the hard truth, because it came up last episode, too, because his crew was like, yeah, why well, you have to be so harsh with the kids? Like, I'd rather disappoint the kid now than make the kid join us, and he ends up dying, because he's not ready for this. It's, it isn't a life meant for him right now. You know, maybe someday, but not now. And the pirate that uh, started crap last episode comes and grabs Luffy just to kind of make an example. Luckily, Shanks and his crew rolled up and did their thing, which I'm like, did we ever get... Because I was like, I definitely know, at least where I am in the series, I've never seen what Shanks can really do in a fight, which kind of brought up something interesting later on, but we'll, 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 like later on in this episode, but we'll, we'll continue that because uh, it's part of this section of the ep uh, this part of these parts of the episode. But either way, because obviously you still didn't get to really see what Shanks looks like fighting, but I'm like, yeah. I was like, I don't... I didn't even remember his crew fighting in the anime. Once again, I, I reference the anime and not just the manga as well because I've only seen the anime. I've never even looked at it. I've seen like some panels of the manga, but that's about it. I've mainly watched the anime. No, entirely watched the anime. Sorry. Um, but I do love how, once again, all those flashbacks do have a... It's a key understanding of why Luffy is the way he is. Because in so many capacities, and also where the story is currently, how that parallels with Luffy, and even how there it parallels in so many different ways. But, you know, c continuing where we were, the fact is that uh, Shake showed up and saved Luffy, but in the process, he ended up losing his arm um to that monster which i distinctly remember that but i was like i don't remember how shanks got rid of that creature now that i'm sitting here thinking about it i feel like i vaguely remember like it handled happened the same way because i was like because i was I, I was like how is shanks going to deal with this thing is he just telling it to get lost like how is that and then his eyes did that thing i was like wait what i was like and then like i said i'm vaguely remembering i'm like did that happen I was like, did they introduce that this early in the show? I mean, granted, they didn't name drop it, but I'm like, because I'm, I'm actually, because it's been, once again, been so low, I'm like, I'm trying to remember. I know it's the Will of D stuff, but I can't remember if it's, was it the, is it the Conqueror's Roar or is it the Conqueror's Will? It's one of those two, what Shanks did in that moment, but I'm like, yo, like, you don't get a name drop for that in like forever i was like holy crap for i was like did they really introduce that this early maybe they make you think like oh is that just something shanks can do and it's like no you find out that like other people can do it as well but it's like it's a very special thing but i'm like that's how you dealt with the sea beast holy shit but obviously luffy felt bad because it's like right you told me i wasn't ready and you were right and because of me you're hurt and you know because luffy's like who knows how much of an impact that's going to have on you as a pirate but for shanks it's like it's okay like an arm is an arm or like that doesn't matter what matters is that you're okay i also kept wondering like why does the actor who plays shanks look so familiar it's uh the actor's name is i'm um probably gonna butcher it's, it's peter i'm gonna say Gadiot, I'm probably butchering it, but I was like, what do I know you from? He's Adam in Yellow Jackets, if you've seen Yellow Jackets. I was like, that's why you look so familiar. But for him to um, also set sail and... Um because he did tell Luffy, like, right, dude, uh, I'm not coming back. So in the time frame from Luffy being the little kid to where he is present day, he has not seen Shanks because Shanks never did come back. But it's like, I think that's also another reason Luffy's going out. I mean, to be Pirate King, sure, but I think 
the King of the Pirates, but I think it's also because somewhere he's hoping to run into Shanks because him and Shanks made that promise. It's like, right, you keep this hat for now until the day we run into each other. Then you can return it to me only when you've become a great pirate. Because it's like, right, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to find a crew better than you and people that I can all like have trust to have my back. Because I brought it up last episode of how everything, like Luffy modeled himself so much after Shanks. And it, it makes some sense because for him, it's just like Shanks, it's like the model pirate. That's why like he doesn't stand for pirates being the to total demonic tool bags that they are when he keeps saying like i'm in a different kind of pirate because for him the example of a pirate and a crew he already saw the best version of that with shanks and his crew and for him it's like they're the ideal and so he follows in his footstep because once again that's his idol that's his hero that's his role model and also little luffy trying to do his gum gum techniques is actually really adorable uh but obviously shifting to present day the episode didn't really go into it, but I could have sworn, weren't there like, I mean, once again, it's condensing everything, but if I remember correctly, there was more shenanigans related with Nami, if I'm not mistaken, because I don't think they're going to lean into it, once again, like the Zoro of it, like, I don't think they're going to lean into how, um, how, like, directionally, uh, challenged she is, I don't think this is going to lean into, like, how gold diggerish, like, Nami is, and that's not me being disparaging, like, Nami is a, that's one of her character flaws, she's super obsessed with money, um, but I, if I remember correctly, like, didn't she, like, rob and screw over Zoro and Luffy a couple times, like, in the time frame at the beginning, like, she was just trying to get away from them and just tricking him, just like she tricked those pirates off their boat at the beginning of this, in the first episode, I could, I think there was more of that, that's why I was curious about whether or not the show was gonna lean into, like, and then they kind of covered it a little bit this episode of just who Nami is, that she is the person that's like, right, I'm the, I'm the, you know, it kind of goes along with the thief element and it there, and it, you know, it's actually an, an actually sad part of her character, but we'll talk about that more as the season progresses, but it's like, right, her having to be the deceitful, manipulative person that she is. And it's like I said, for a reason, but yeah, they, um, finally got the, the safe cracked open and, found the, the map to the Grand Line, and Nami kind of breaks everything down about uh, the Red Line and the Grand Line, and obviously no one believing One Piece to actually exist. You know, all of it's done, it's inspired all these pirates, but no one actually knows it exists, but, you know, it's like, oh, you'll have to see your face once we actually go see it, but it's like, I'm not your navigator, I'm not, we're not officially a crew. Um, and then they get snatched up by Buggy, which I'm like, did that all really go down in a tent? Didn't that happen somewhere else? Didn't that actually happen in the town itself? Because the town is destroyed, but I'm like, maybe it all did go down in a... I also love that. I think it's so interesting. They referenced the lion, but we don't actually get to see it. We see the guy who who's the, the lion dude. We see him, but we don't actually see the lion. It's like, right, might as well save some of that budget, right? And just kind of like, maybe they just didn't find a way that they felt comfortable utilizing in that way. So it's like, we only got to see, like, we got to see some of Buggy's crew. Home dude, um... Who went after Zo uh, Zoro? Him and the Lion Dude are the only. I feel like they're the ones that have stood out the most. I don't remember the rest of Buggy's crew. I only remember those two in particular, which I also had no like. I had no idea that Buggy was pl uh, played by Jeff Ward. I just thought that was so interesting. Um, I'm familiar with Jeff Ward because uh, he's in the show uh, Brand New Cherry Flavor. I think is the most recent thing I'd seen him in. But prior to that, like he was in, a, you know, uh, he was a recurring and then I think series regular in uh, the show Agents of Shield. So I thought that was uh, pretty dope when I found out. I was like, I had no idea you were Buggy. I also wasn't his Buggy so interesting because I'm like, your Buggy's like actually like intimidating and scary to me. It's like it gives me very like it the clown slash Joker vibes. Specifically, kind of gives me, like, Joaquin Phoenix Joker vibes. Uh, but I think it's also because, like, in my head, because Buggy definitely is, like, he has his serious moments, but he is definitely a lot more comic relief later on in the show. So I think I, I forget how serious he was in his introduction. So... I mean, even now he was kind of jokey a little bit, and even then, I, I'm even thinking about. It, I'm like, yeah, I feel like I even remember. Like, I mean, but once again, One Piece has always leaned into its com comedic elements, even with some of its bad guys, um, especially especially the ones that have kind of stuck around, like a buggy who's been very recurring and popping in here and there, you know. So, 
But like, it's not, it's like, it's that really like, like I said, the Joker type of vibe of like, laugh, like the way he's got everyone chained up and it's like, okay, laugh. And then when Luffy was like, oh, like, like he reps, he says, I, I don't know. And he's like, nose. Are you making fun of my nose? He's like, no, not at first. But I mean, now that I'm, I'm is that real? And he was so self-conscious. And I love that that plays into Buggy's character. That It's like, that's why he wants to be king of the pirates. He wants to be, it's like, I, I want to be known for the first time. And he ends up bringing up him and Shank's history of like, I, once again, not until that comes up again later on in the series that I was like, I, cause I guess, it, I guess because to be fair, the beginning of the series and when I picked up One Piece again, I I picked up One Piece again after like a couple year break. I, I think the last episodes I'd seen was like in 2009 was airing on Toonami. I didn't pick it up again until like 2012 and I started roughly about the Sky PR because that's where it had ended one at that during Toonami's run initially. But either way, it had been such a large gap that I guess I didn't remember him ever dropping that information and him and Shanks had history. So when it shows up later on of like, oh, you find out what legendary pirate that they used to serve on the same crew for. I was like, oh, they had history like that. They probably did bring it up earlier in the show and I just didn't remember it. So I just thought this kind of neat. But for him, it's like, oh, I thought we were friends. And then he betrayed me. It's like, oh, that's what he did to you. You're just another person. He actually tries to bond with Luffy on the fact is we were both abandoned by the person we thought was such a good person. But no. You're also holding on to this stupid straw hat of his. It's just like I Buggy wants to prove himself because for him it's like I'm the I'm the joke in so many capacities and I refuse to be anyone's joke. The only punchline I'm gonna be is my own punchlines and I'm not gonna be a joke for anyone else. I'm gonna be the one making the jokes and everyone's gonna laugh and everyone's gonna smile when I tell them to because it's his way to kind of take back control with his own insecurities of not feeling like he's enough. But it's like I'm gonna prove myself, so uh, just like I brought up previously, we did kind of get a little bit into the whole, hey, what Nami's willing to do, this, you know, self-preservation that she ended up selling Luffy out. It's like, oh, you want another person in your crew? Throws the hat high in the air so that Luffy stretches and uses his powers in front of Buggy. And she tried to run, but the moment she saw the destruction of the town and, you know, that shook Nami to her core. It's like, what did you do to this town? And it's like, oh, like, yeah, I destroyed it. Yeah, fine. It's like, you know, I nearly destroyed all of it. And all the townsfolk are here in my audience. So it's fine. Like I said, I, I, I think it's just so interesting. Like, though, I, I wonder if I ever picked up on stuff like that with Nami at the beginning. Probably not. But it's like, obviously, having the future knowledge of knowing her circumstances. Like, oh, I see why this hit so, like, personal to you. Why you've taken such offense to it. So... Her and Zoro having their moments later on when they're having that discussion after being captured again. And it's like, right, are you going to abandon us and leave us to death? It's like, right, there wasn't anything we could do. We were surrounded. So luckily she has more lot pits because she is the most resourceful person on a crew. I mean, to be fair, that plays into, I mean, for one, she's the navigator. But even her fighting style as the series progresses kind of leaned into the whole strategist that she is. I'd probably put her and Usopp at the top as being like the more strategic fight. I'd, I'd still even put her even above Usopp because Usopp kind of was strategic in some moments, but it's like definitely Nami's the biggest like strategist amongst them. Zoro also continuing to be the man of few words, but also a man of no fear because it's like, oh, do you not fear death? It's like, no, I just don't fear you. And it's like that line he said to Luffy about Luffy. It's like, right. Uh, because I believe, it's like, wait, do you actually believe in him? It's like, no, but he believes in himself. It kind of rubs off on you. So kind of sticking it through with Luffy because Luffy inspired him. And I, I mean, that's, that's Luffy's gift. You know, you could say, yes, that's typical Shonen protagonist thing of inspiring people. But it's like, yeah, Luffy might be a simpleton, but he's a lovable idiot that you can't help but love because he's sweet and so determined and so steadfast in chasing his dream. And he inspires so many others to chase their dream. We get to witness uh, Buggy's power, the chop chop fruit and what it did for him. Being able to kind of slice his body into pieces the way he, he can. Luffy once again taking his lessons from Shanks when he gets free from the tank. And it's like, yeah, you can spill water on me. You can do whatever you want to me. But you, I'm not going to let you do anything. Like when you, you're, We definitely have a problem when you threaten my friends. 
Because once again, I've said it time and time again, that's why I love me some Kingdom Hearts. Because I am the sucker for the shonen, my friends are my power stuff. That's why I love Kingdom Hearts so much. That's why I love like One Piece, specifically Luffy, because it's all about his Nakama. You know, and I'm like, I, I live for that stuff. I get gushy about it. Like, I, that, the cheesy friendship, friendship stuff works for me all the time. So, like, that's what I love about it. Uh, we also got our first uh, gum gum bazooka because it's like because that's also the interesting thing you don't realize it until like like, like I said like the, I I watch someone play one of the pirate war the One Piece pirate warrior games and you see like man Luffy obviously gets the finishing blow on a lot of the main main bosses over the course of the show and every time he pulls out like a very specific like move to end up beating them like he did because uh, he's done it like. This is the third time he's used a very specific move. Like, obviously, he used the pistol against um, Alveda. He used uh, the gum gum whip against uh, Morgan. And now the bazooka against uh, Buggy, which that did click in my mind. I'm like, I do remember that, like separating his body and locking up into pieces. Because I, I, I was like, how do you actually beat uh, How do you actually beat uh, Buggy? Like, other than, like, I, I couldn't remember exactly until they did. I was like, right, right, right. That's how you do it. Um, I also appreciate, uh, cause, um, I didn't remember they did so much setup for it, but, uh, in the, uh, safe, there was also a wanted poster for Kuro, which Morgan had made a whole point about, which I was like, if Kuro's who I think he is, I'm like, isn't that BS? Cause like Kuro's off doing his own thing, isn't he? I guess like maybe he was just like parading around trying to make himself bigger than what he was, or maybe not unless Kuro got away from him, but I'm like, no. I was like, no, that can't. I was like, no, 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 that can't be. It has to be a situation of like he was just lying. But we, we do see his wanted poster um, in the um, in the safe. Even Nami uh, patching up Luffy's hat at the end because it's like, yeah, his um, uh, it is his most valuable treasure. And that line with Zoro is like, is every day going to be like this? He's like, yeah, but it's like. Shanks always told me that if the path you're on is uh, too easy, then you're on the wrong path. You know, it's like, huh, Shane's guy sounds like a really good guy. And, you know, Luffy just kind of nods. And then we get our little sting with uh, Nami contacting someone like, right, I got the map. And it's like, ooh, drip feeding the, you know, Nami circumstances like that. I thought that was interesting. Um, but other than that, uh, we also had the whole situation with Kobe, which I'm like, the moment that continued, I was like, wait, did that storyline continue a lot further than I, I'm like, I had to think back to it. I'm like. That did continue a lot further than I thought it did. Because I was like, spoilers, Kobe disappears from the story for a while because like we're not around him. That's why I'm like, I remember when he pops up again. But I was like, wait, that story continued even further? I didn't remember that. I thought it was like, oh, I, I vaguely feel like I remember like, yes, there's a little while and you catch up with Kobe again. And then there's another long period of time you catch up with Kobe. He's even older now. Like, that's why I remember... So that, that story to kind of continue like that. I guess for this first season, we will see the continuation of that. But I'm like, especially because he's around Garp, who came to investigate everything. And Morgan's being like, oh, yeah, they I fought them off. Oh, they were so scared of me. I'm so good. I'm so awesome. But he could kind of smell the fear on... Um, smell the fear on... Called me and was like, all right, so tell me the truth. And ended up telling the truth about what happened in Luffy. Because the moment he heard about the straw, he said, wait, it was a straw hat pirate named Luffy. So it's, yeah, he know because I guess everyone has already known about Shanks as straw hat. And obviously it's like Luffy ends up making, taking that completely as his own, obviously. But I think for Garp, it's not what he was expecting to find. But as I interested finding out that the pirates ended up helping you and it's like are you associated with them and it's like no and Kobe having to be like right pirates we have to they're they're bad we have to capture them like we as the marines we are justice it's obviously for him it's like this is all that he's ever believed in and now part of me wonders now, now with the conversation of what Car Garp says at the end it seems like Kobe might have inspired him because it's like Oh, what we have to do, we can't just kill the pirates no matter how much we kill them, hunting them down and stuff like that. It won't matter. They've all been inspired. They have their dreams. The only way we're going to end this is by crushing their dreams. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to chase after these pirates that robbed this place and rob them of their dream. And bring them to justice because that's who we are as the Marines. 
And Kobe feels bad because he told Luffy the next time they meet, they'd be enemies. It's like, yeah, but in this moment, we're friends. And even now, he's still struggling with because it's like, you saved me from Alveda when no one else did. And now I'm like, I'm having to hunt you down. In fact, I might be responsible for giving Garp the idea of crushing your dream of being king of the pirates to um, take you down. A lot of interesting developments. I'm excited to see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.